What is up, people? How's it going? This is Bharat, and welcome back to the part two video of the YouTube thumbnail maker. So we've been doing a couple of videos on Kiwi and OpenCV, and we started with creating a YouTube thumbnail maker with the help of OpenCV. So so far, what you have done is you've taken a foreground, background, clearly available image, and you've separated the background out from the image. And the, today's video, I'm going to be uh, talking about how we can impose this image into a background picture and probably add some text on it and make it look at least similar to a YouTube thumbnail. Uh, will it be the final image? Let's find out in this video. This video is sponsored by Anacademy. For those of you all who want to become a software developer or just have become one, Anacademy brings you the platform where you can get access to weekly shows which you can watch live. Some of the shows that are going to go live on Anacademy soon are hiring updates in startup and major tech companies, eligibility criteria, how to apply for them, live mock interview sessions, pre-placement talks where HRs from top companies come and talk about their hiring process, top 20 questions which are asked in interviews and how to solve them, weekend projects which would make use for your resume to stand out in the crowd, life journey of fellow working coders in fan companies and many more shows like that. You'll have an option to interact with industry leaders on the platform and get a chance to take part in an online mock interview to sharpen your skill and get real-time feedback. You'll also be getting this at a rate of 999 for one year, but if you use my promo code CODERMONK, you will get it for 899 only. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below as well. Time to get back to our video. All right, so if you guys are following me, so this is where we left off in the previous video. I'll uh, open this up to see or show you guys how this is looking like. Um, so basically this is going to be my image and I'm just taking, I took it primarily because there's a very clear difference between the background and the foreground. And only if this image is there, we can be using the uh, method that we used, so the grab cut method. So this is working pretty much cool uh, if there is a clear differentiation between the background and the foreground. So I'll just click here and you can see that the grab cut is successfully pressed, uh, successfully done and it saves it into a grab cut.png file. So the grab cut.png file is looking somewhat similar to this right here. Here, uh, since you've been doing a lot of videos, yeah. So this is the grab cut final image, and as you can see, we dis discussed about how to remove the background image, background blacks, black color uh, background into a transparent background, and there's also some noise around here, which is fine because uh, I'm not really worried about this. So this is doing a better job, uh, even though it could have been much better job. This is this is okay job at at this point of time. So what I'm going to do now is to take this image and put it into a background image. Now background image is usually a bigger image, uh, which might be of 19, 20, 10, 18. Uh, of of that co coordinates the background image of might be of bigger bigger size so what we need to do is to take this crap cut image and put it onto a background image and put it probably in one specific position and post that i'm going to write some text around uh, on that final image and probably try to show it to you guys so we will have this method completely separately and what we're going to do now is to actually create another method let's call this method as uh, create a final image all right so this will be probably be called as part of the uh, image after the click button is clicked uh, or the click here button is pressed so i'll start writing that right here all right so what this exactly is going to do is to first of all uh, try to read the background image so i already have a background image present i'll just call it as bg image and i'll just call it as cv2.im read and the file name is actually bg dot jpeg right one is done now what we need to ne do next is to read the grab cut image again so i'll just call it as overlay image because that is going to be the image that you're going to overlay right so i am read and you're going to be calling that as well so grab cut dot png all right all right so the next step that you need to do is to uh, obviously overlay uh, the overlay image should be of the same size as the background image this is important because you're going to be using a method called as this is important because you're going to be using a method called as add weighted which is uh, probably the method for uh, transposing an uh, overlay image onto a background image so that's important so the, for that step you will just do uh, a resize or recall the resize method I just call resize of uh, overlay image and uh, expected the sizes that it's of 1920 1080p it's 1080p standard so that's going to be the size of the overlay image and the bg image at this point of time what we're going to do next is to start with uh, doing 
uh, or reversing what you have done so far. So what what last video has done was we took the BGR and we reversed and we created uh, remove the alpha channel out and we created our destination image. That's how we are getting the final image, which is uh, which is without the background. So this is actually have a transparent transparent background. So we need to recreate that again here. So what I'm going to do next do now is to have a gray overlay and at the gray overlay is going to be cv2.cvt color. The source is going to be the overlay image and it's going to say a cv2 dot cv color dot bgr to create so bgr to create is done next we'll create an overlay mask the mask is to specifically uh, had a black background so that uh, this will probably be useful for our transposing purpose threshold uh, we just say gray overlay and one comma 255 which cv2 dot thresh thresh binary uh, of one so this is actually the same step that we are doing from here so if you, if you see here this is what we did in the previous step also so we are basically again converting this image that we had uh, into an uh, simpler three channel image so that it's easier to transpose let's the next step is to create a background mask this background mask is going to be 255 uh, minus our overlay mask so we are just uh, trying to inverse the entire mask so that it covers all the background pixels all right the next step we're going to do is to uh, like i said convert this mask into a three channel uh, three channel image so that it's easy for the add weighted method to be called so just say overlay mask is equal to cv2.cvt color overlay mask again cv2. color bgr to uh, Great to BGR. Alright, so you can take it to BGR. Great, right? Again, reverse it again. Background mask is equal to CV2 dot CVT color. Background mask CV2 dot color gray to BGR. So what we've done is basically to just convert or create a background mask and pull it back to BGR at this point of time. So nothing much we have done, just done some pre-processing here. Finally, you will convert or create our image. Uh, we have named it as uh, BG image, right? So we'll just call it as BG image is equal to uh, BG image into 1 by 255.0. Just need to convert into a float. Uh, forward by that background mask into 1 by 255.0 so what exactly we are doing here is to convert our background uh, image that we had into a series of uh, floating point values so we're just converting everything in the background image part in the from a form of a pixel into a floating point value so that it's easy for us to add the add weighted method so just do the same for the overlay part also i'll just call it as overlay part and we'll just do the same stuff here again overlay uh, image uh, into 1 by 1 by 255.0 into overlay mask into 1 by 255.0 so basically we have done is to convert it convert the both image pg image and the overlay image into series of zero to one floating point numbers all right time to finally create our final image and this final image is going to be calling the cv2 dot add weighted method just say add weighted on the method that requires is the bg part uh, bg image part as the background part and what is the maximum digit points that you should take followed by the overlay part uh, this which, which need to be transposed and we'll just say 255.0 for that as well finally the transpose map so go inside this method you can find all the information that you need to know it says this source one what is the alpha source two beta and gamma just giving all these values these are mandatory values that's what we have given so far right here all right, so we have added the np.u into it also to maybe uh, convert it back to an image. That's, that's the entire step. So final image is also present. Next step you're going to do is to now add some text. So I'll just uh, call the cv2.put text and the image is going to be the final image and we can just put any text here. So I'm just going to say like, watch me cook. This is going to be the text. 
and you just say the location where it needs to be present so i'm just giving a random location here you can control this location basically where you want to put the text you just say hush font hershey and that's the only font that's available that is also something that you can consider if you really want to if you're really considering to create the entire thumbnail through this method then um, the fonts are very very limited so you just find it a little bit difficult so what is the font size which is four followed by the color it's going to be dark black followed by the thickness and finally the cv2 dot cv2 dot line l a a so so basically putting the text also is done uh, we will just finally now write the final text like this we'll write the write it back to an image so just say cv2 dot im write and the file name is going to be uh, final out dot png right and the final out png followed by that is final image right final image is done if you want we need to uh, we should be able to show it to the user if you want to that technique you guys already know by using the labels texture we can show it back to the user but for this one i'm just going to write it and just going to update the label saying that final thumbnail is success so this is what I'm going to do and make sure to call this method right here. Just in, invoke this method. Just say and we are voila done. So stop the already running uh, Kiwi app and we will now try to trigger it from base. Just open this up. All right, it's present right here. Click on this and final thumbnail is successful time to check how the final thumbnail is now looking like uh, which is what we have written to final out.png let's check how that looks like okay where is this this is right here click on this final out.png i'm very interested to see how it looks like final out.png okay <laughs> this is going to be the final image so there's a couple of information that i really wanted to add right here so what the whole thing was that it looks like okay so it's, it's looking similar to an thumbnail uh, it's adhering to the thumbnail standards 10 9, 1080 by 190 1920 is fine but if you see that the font is kind of like very very basic and nobody does this font and the image is also a little bit pixelated because we chose a very small image which was like an image of size uh, probably uh, 280 by 180 which is a very small image so how i would recommend is to run the same algorithm on a much bigger image probably a 2880 or something bigger than 1080 so that you can when you resize it to a smaller a smaller one the pixelation won't happen so this is one step and also you can find that the grab cut does a better job uh, if it is having a very clear background and foreground and this is actually giving you about 65 to 70 percent of clean output and I would say this is a very good point to start with. So what I will do is I'll just have my um, grab cut alone taken and write or create my own thumbnail in a Canva or I can even use my uh, Photoshop to do a much better job because I, it will take so much time for me to just grab cut things out. And this will probably increase my flow or it probably increase the speed with which I can create thumbnails. So you will see this video when it's getting released, it's going to be completely created with this algorithm only. So let me know what you guys think in a comment section below and have, have the code available in my uh, GitHub repository link in the description. Uh, I'll meet you guys in the next video with something very, very useful on Kiwi and Python OpenCV. Until then, it's Bharat. Peace out. Have a super awesome day.